Ragazzi, ero via da un ordine per i ragazzi today. I'm gonna do something a little fun for you guys today, and um, today I'm gonna be ranking all MCU movies from the worst to the best. And uh, we have 20 movies so far from Iron Man, all the time, and the Wasp. So we're just gonna rank a few of them right now. Alright, number 20 is, of course, by the way, of course, uh, on the disappointing list is Thor the Dark World. Honestly, Thor the Dark World is not really a good movie, it's kind of mediocre. And the, the plot is all over the place, and the only thing that's Thor is kind of boring as well in this movie, but the but the villain Malekith is the worst of the villains. He's not good. He's really a terrible villain to be in general, and the movie's not really good. And like that. the only saving grace of the movie is actually Loki, because if Loki was not in the movie, the movie would have been a waste to be honest. And like that, it's kind of a school, like what they say here. Still feel like something like school grinder after the fall. The, Solid status on like this is through the predecessors because the original Thor was kind of okay, it was not the best one, but this one's kind of mediocre. Right. Next, I have the Incredible Hulk. Now, personally, I did not watch this movie, neither Thor the Dark World, and um, honestly, I really don't want to watch those because you know all the stuff that they said about it. But uh, maybe I'll check it out and I'll try my best about it. But Incredible Hulk, a lot of people say, Ang a lot of people say that Edward Norton is a really great Hulk, he's not a bad Hulk. But like sometimes the story is kind of a mess. It's just Hulk running from the government to like Banner. So Banner running for government. Hey, I'm safe. No, I'm not safe. Like so that thing. The villain Abomination was kind of okay. Weak, weak villain. He was kind of okay, but that's the movie. Now, movie of Iron Man Two. Iron Man Two was uh, arguably an, a great movie like that. But honestly, what made it really bad is that the plot is all over the place. We got plots with Tony Stark fixing his own arc reactor that's poisoning him. We have the Justin Hammer jealousy thing, and then we got the Rhodey War Machine thing. It's just the plots all over the place. And the villains, Justin Hammer and Whiplash, were really bad villains. And like, they're not really great. But both of them have motivations. One's jealous, and one's the revenge guy. Simple like that. Then I have Avengers Age of Ultron. No, this one was not a bad movie, to per se. It's not horrible. It was okay, but. Sometimes it's just a confusing and exhausting movie like that. And the villain Ultron was not really a good villain. Because if you got it feels like betrayed because when you guys see the trailers, it felt it felt a darker movie like with the creepy piano with the creepy Pinocchio, no strings on me on this one. So this is I call it a Marvel thing, not Disney Disney Marvel thing. Like anyway. But but Ultron, honestly he's not really a good villain. He was kind of okay. Yeah, but still, like it felt betrayed because he's more sarcastic. Like, it's just Tony Stark in a robot suit. That's it. That's his personality. Next, I have the original Thor. No, I like this one. It's really great and like that. But, but it's like kind of a simple fish out of water story about Hulk. About Hulk. About Thor. We could get him banned. A ban banned from his powers because of his arrogance and behavior, and I'm forced to be sent to Earth to learn about humanity. And like that, and like that. the only per the only thing that nobody likes about the movie I heard is Natalie Portman's Jane Foster character, and I felt fine. It's not a big deal, and like that. But she was kind of bit annoying with her friends. I think that's pretty much it. And like that. Then I have the first Captain America first Avenger movie. Now you guys may know this for the phase one of the MCU movies are really kind of weak in this one, but uh, bear with me. First Avenger was not a bad movie. It's a really great origin story. He's one of the recognizable heroes in the MCU, but um, the thing with this one is because I'm um, well, I'm not a movie critic that much, but I I really love to be one. But the thing is, how do I say it? Like, so it's kind of a weak plot about good old fashioned goody two shoes Captain America because this movie is set in World War Two, and it's the first of its kind to see it, to be in World War Two. Right. Then we have Iron Man Three. Shane Black's Iron Man Three was kind of an okay. A movie to say was still a weak one because of the whole Mandarin twist. Because when you see the trailer, this is like going to be the best Iron Man movie. It's so dark, so scary. Mandarin is going to be like a monstrous villain. However, when you see the actual movie, oh god, like the Mandarin twist was really fake. Like it's such a betrayal of a character because if you guys don't know the comics, Mandarin Iron Man's arch is one of the is like one of Iron Man's biggest arch enemies, and he's there to destroy no matter what. Uh, then we have Ant-Man. No, I 
think now this one's on an, a, a great film. It's a funny movie, highest movie, funny comedy movie. I mean, Paul Rudd, honestly one of my favorite actors, really hilarious. Been doing this suit for a long time, yeah. but he perfectly. He's a perfect charm character. Like, I mean, the character of I mean, is just just normal, normal guy who was just a family man who was just being driven to this superhero world. Like that. I think he's, he's really hilarious and I like him about him. Anyway, but sometimes the plot, but sometimes the story is kind of all over, way, way, way over there about him training and then he becomes the Ant Man. It's a really fun movie. Check it out. Then we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This one, in particular, is kind of a lot of Sean Chandler. You guys know Sean Chandler, the MCU ranking guy. He said that this is the most distasteful of the Guardians of the franchise. This was sequel ever, but it's kind of a fun movie. I liked it. It's not a bad one, but when the but the first one I consider it to be the best. I consider it awesome. The second one, the second one was, was not as good as the first one, but it was kind of fine. It was eighty percent, eighty three percent. It was good, but with some majority in the movie goers say that this is not a good one, not a good villain with ego. Like yeah, because kind of took another level, but it. Took another level with the Guardians because it's just about Star or trying to find his dad. It turns out is the ego, and then he goes not his dad and stuff like that. Then we have Avengers: Infinity War at number eleven. This is honestly the most exciting of the bunch because it is the culmination of ten years of the MCU. And to be honest, I cannot believe I ranked it like way a bit lower on the last, and not even the top ten or the top five for the top three. The reason why is because I felt like the movie's a bit unfinished and like that. Because with the Fatal World, Universe Galaxy, probably, this is like taking a different franchises, put them all together in one movie. It's really an, a new idea to say like that. Like, but it's which. And Thanos, honestly, Thanos is one of the best villains of the MCU. The best one. Josh Brolin really did a great job. And, like that. and that ending that just drags you down. Like, takes your heart out like shatters it to pieces it's such a sad ending ending but I like the movie it's really good it's really amazing I loved it then we have to go to top top 10 we have Emma and the Wasp the sequel it's the newest in the MCU Wasp is being the new character in the MCU it's really a funny movie I liked it it's such a great story great character like that but the villain ghost the only thing I have with the movie the, the, the villain no, there's nothing wrong with her, but uh, she's kind of like an anti-hero who's trying to do something as a revenge because of adoption like that. And there's got kind of Paul Rudd and Avenging Lily back again. Really great movie. Bring us to Captain America Winter Soldier. Honestly, this isn't one of the best MCU movies, one of the strongest ones because they made Captain America more complex in this movie because it shows the political thriller time because first... Cap movie was just a World War Two era movie. This one just just takes the character out of it because they were like, you know, that's the side change Captain America. This is not the Captain America you know, you guys know and love. Because back then it, it was just him doing the heroic things. Here he has to he has to know who to trust and who do not trust. And even this fake assassination of Nick Fury and Bucky being brainwashed. It's really great. It's really nice. One of the most astonishing, outstanding movies in the MCU. It's really great. We have Doctor Strange. Now, this is one of my f favorite heroes in the Marvel Universe. Doctor Strange is such an amazing villain. Amazing character. His tricks and wizardry and magic. It's really awesome. The movie is really amazing. I watched it before and I cannot say that much. It's really the, one of the best visuals I've seen in it so far in the MCU. It's really, really cool. And like them, and uh, Kaecilius, the wrong weak villains, but really great, great characters, great mentors. The ancient one, Wong, Mordu, who was a secret villain. We don't know if he's actually one of them or not. Then we have the original Guardians of the Galaxy. I love this movie so much, and I love uh, the original team. Like as you can see, the five Guardians members all over there in the right big screen over there, Star Lord. Great character, Gamora, Drax, Screw Rocket. Like they never thought that they would actually go in and care for those characters that much because especially with Rocket and Groot, they're just talking truly in a raccoon. But you couldn't but you could feel them, you know, you could relate to those characters. They're really funny. And Drax, possibly the funniest character 
Ronan, the accuser again, weak villain. MC is also a big pro villain problem, so I don't know why. But again, it's really great, really MC, really great characters. Honestly, one of the best highlights of the MCU. This one was such a surprise hit for them. Then, being a top six, it's Captain America Civil War. Unlike the Winter Soldier, this one is a, is a clash between two heroes, Iron Man and Captain America. Between the heroes, and Cap has to choose a side, and he chooses a side to be like, you know, we forget what the government says. We do whatever we want, we do how we do it our way. But then Iron Man's like, no, because of what happened in Age of Ultron, he's like, no, I'm going to stop you, and you're not going to stop him. Black Panther, Black Panthers and Spider-Man were great additions to this in this movie, and and I love how T'Challa was like seeing his father's death, and he's going after Bucky, and he's and, and he's not gonna let anyone stop him, and he doesn't care who Cap is. And like the airport fight, that was one of the best scenes in the MC, the airport battle. For me, to be honest, Captain America Civil War is not my favorite MC move. I liked Witch Soldier a lot, but this one was really a great one, great addition, so good. Top five, Spider-Man: Homecoming. I didn't expect this movie to be really hilarious, by the way. Love Tom Holland, great Spider-Man, Vulture. For me, I think Vulture was kind of a weak villain. Don't hate me in the comments because I I liked Vault. I like Michael Keaton. It's not a great actor, but I feel like Vulture didn't do much, and he's just a guy who cares about family and like that. You know, he thinks family's more important. And being a teenager himself, and me a teenager as well, it's really kind of relatable because teenagers do a lot of stuff. Uh, being having a tough life, homecoming, high school, everything. And this Spider-Man is the best part because we get it. We didn't see his origin like always. We do really because we know his origin story already. But this one is like continuing his his origins and see what happens after the events of Civil War where they met him. It's really great. Then the climax of Phase One Army, one of the best superhero team ups of all time, is the Avengers. The Avengers. This one, honestly, this is the best superhero movie of all time. I loved how Josh Sweden was able to bring all these different franchises together. Captain America, Iron Man, Thor and Hulk, Hawkeye and Black Widow all together in one movie. Battle of New York, best one so far, best action scenes. And I love the team of the circle and the theme music. Honestly, great. Since because like it all started with, it, um, with Iron Man all the way till now. Really great to see all these heroes come together in one screen. It's really an unprecedented idea, and I could see why people think that when they see the Justice League comparing to the Avengers, why they think the Avengers are better because at least they precise the characters in even more. And Loki is like honestly a great villain than Steppenwolf, to be honest, how people compare them. But uh, the thing is, comparing them is not even funny more because we all know who's gonna who are really great with movies. So, yeah. Then we have Thor Ragnarok. This is a very, very, very funny movie, and it's really like changing the tone of Thor character, the Thor character a lot. Because if Thor one and Thor two, like Thor one was a really okay-ish movie, like it's the start of the Thor franchise. Dark World, big disappointment, big low. Ragnarok, two thumbs up. Honestly, I love the Hulk in this one. Hulk is like having a more screen time, like. Things talking English and like that, and Valkyrie, great addition. Loki still, still great, still great anti hero now. He's helping Thor this time, and I and I love how they will bring the world to Sakaar, Planet Hulk from the comics, and bring it into the movie. Really, honestly, great. Then we have the movie that started it all, Iron Man. Watching this right now, I watched it like I think um I believe it was months ago. I watched this movie and I forgot how awesome it was because honestly this movie started kicked off the MCU. Robert Downey Jr. is one of the most amazing Tony Starks ever, like amazing actor, and he's and he brought this character to life. Honestly, he's really great, and I love the arc that he's given, and how he's he used his Iron Man to skip the to skip on the terrorists and how he built that suit, how he saves the people. It's honestly. The, honestly, it's amazing. And Obadiah Stane, maybe okay is villain or bad, good, we don't know. But really great, great character. And Iron Man is a perfect, perfect move to start the MCU with. And um, arguably the number one best movie in this website's opinion, and in my opinion, my opinion is going to be Avengers anyway or Infinity War. But according to that, opinion is Black Panther. 
Black Panther was one of the most surprising movies ever made, and honestly, you know, in all the superior movies, Black Panther takes the number one spot no matter what. Because this is honestly, I love how they will show the world of Wakanda. Killmonger, great villain. I love the vibranium they use. It's and I love the action. It's really great. I love the neo neo geographic drama with classical politics and like that. And I love the continuation of the Black Panther story. It's a great addition to the MCU. I cannot wait for the sequel. And I can I just cannot wait to see more of Black Panther. I cannot wait for this. Honestly, all these moves are so amazing like that. Anyway guys, that's all my record for the MCU from the worst to the best. Anyway, if you can or not, I'm gonna release a new video in a bit a minute, but when this uploads, Garissa is in a video talking about the Fine Brothers. And you guys are gonna see alright. This is one record for the MCU movies. And that's it. Take care guys and peace.